Nice. So in that last video, turning an ultrasonic cleaner into this knife, well, I had more fun than I'm willing to admit doing something I know absolutely nothing about. Since I got all this junk out still, I thought I'd keep stumbling around in the dark. This time, maybe, we try ultrasonic welding. Now, yes, this needs a lot more work to even have a chance at becoming a useful cutter. Needs more tuning than some sort of handle, like packaging, I guess, to make it hand-holdable. But to be honest, given the modest success of what happened in that last video, having gotten that out of my system, ultrasonic cutting is just so yesterday. The future, my friends, is welding. Now, before I go ahead and install this new horn, I've got some good news and some bad news. In the last video, I got a lot of suggestions to check this thing with a scope. Scope it, put your oscilloscope on it, check it with a scope, use your scope, tune it with your scope. Didn't you have a scope? But no one thought to say, hey, good thing you didn't try to check that with your scope. I blew out my oscilloscope's channel one. <laughs> and a probe. I hooked it up right across the transducer leads. As soon as I turned on the power supply, I heard crackling right at the BNC connector. Like Rice Krispie cereal, but crispy zier. And my paternal instincts kicked in, but alas, I didn't manage to turn the power supply off fast enough. Smoke came out of that little hole there. I mean, I'm no electrical engineer, but I'm pretty sure that's not the part smoke's supposed to come out of. Now, fortunately for me, O on here is one step ahead. They gave me two channels on this scope. However, in its death throes, channel one froze the screen and I managed to catch a frequency reading, 42 kilohertz. I mean, it was 42 and some change from what I remember. With its dying breath, channel one managed to get me the info I wanted. Here's to you, channel one. Now, I tried and tried to get a screen grab to the thumb drive to share with you here, but the scope was locked up. Of course, stupid is as stupid does, I could have just taken a picture of it with my phone, but that didn't happen either. Though frankly, in that moment, I was more let down by that 42 kilohertz than I was about frying my scope. I was heartbroken that it wasn't the 40 kilohertz I was shooting for. Why wasn't it 40? Then I remembered something. Let's have a look at the graph from that last video from the computer simulation. You see that right there? The peak? That's 42 kilohertz. Shazam. Now, I saw that before, obviously, but I just assumed that the board was going to drive the transducer at 40 kilohertz, and my horn just wouldn't be 100% efficient, if I can even make claims like that in a video like this. I suppose there really is some symbiotic relationship between the electronics and the horn. So, naturally, I was quite stoked. My simulation and my measurements were giving me the same answer. Now, yes, there might be some contrived reasons behind that, and I don't know enough to tell you if it's just a coincidence. But come on, folks, my scope just died. Cut me some slack here. Undaunted, I went back to the drawing board. Same as before, but this time looking for a better 40 kilohertz target using a horn with a small diameter tip, no knife, something that might be suitable for welding. And I got this. And just have a look at how different that is. No blade and a relatively dramatic, I guess, geometry change resulted in some extra length. Some of the transition areas moved around, like where the taper starts and stops and what that taper looks like. But the simulation says resonance at 40 kilohertz, though it does have a little less gain than the last one. The cutter was showing nine to one, this one a little less, about eight to one. I suppose I could have kept trying different geometry, but when I hit 40 kilohertz, not 42, and saw that eight to one gain, well, it was good enough for me. Let's give this a try. Okay, hold on just one finger licking minute. Before I break this thing down, let me try something I should have tried two days ago. I know over the years, you and I, dear viewer, have developed a mutual trust, fostered a relationship. And I don't mean to slight that, but it's not sitting right with me asking you to take my word for something. Let me see if I can't show you that 42 kilohertz. The scope on channel two still appears to work. That's the test signal coming out of the scope itself. I've got the transducer now wired through a foot switch into the wall. Not so much for this, but I think it'll come in more handy when I actually try to do the welding. But I'll be able to turn this on and off sort of remotely now. I don't have to go fumbling for switches on the power supply. Since this is apparently high voltage and high frequency, maybe I can pick something up non-contact style. For the record, it cuts scotch bright very, very well. I'm not getting much of a signal though. Try to loop that around the... Okay, so today I'm getting 41.4. Let's call it 41 and a half kilohertz. 
I don't know what's changed since yesterday. Maybe it's coffee hasn't kicked in yet, but I feel better now having showed you that. Now let's try the welding. So this is my setup. Best I could come up with in a pinch. My little drill press here is standing in for a welding station. Now the horn is in there with a little plastic bushing between the stud and the rest of the drill press because you never know. I broke the foot off my couch to act as an anvil and I've got some plastic. Now this is the same blister pack that I tried to cut before. I don't know exactly what material this is. Uh, I think it's usually either like a PET or PVC. Now, I don't think PVC welds great, but this already has ultrasonic welding along its edges. I'm gonna guess it's PET, but whatever it is, I have evidence that it should work, meaning like it should weld, not that the horn should work. But if the horn works, this material should weld. I'm gonna set this up kind of like a spot welder. I'll add preload with the drill press and then hit the foot pedal. All right, let's do this. That did absolutely nothing. I'm not exactly sure how much pressure I need or how long I need this to run for. I've got no options, but push it till it breaks. Nothing. You just try lighter pressure and longer time. All it's doing is scuffing up my nice blister pack. Okay, so if I push really hard, it just puts holes in my plastic. For the record, this is showing almost 35 kilohertz, which kind of sucks. I've been playing around with it. It's sort of bonding. It feels a little bit like cheating though. So if I let it run, let's do it over here where it's not connected. If I just sort of keep light pressure on it, like if I crank down on it, the horn doesn't make any real rattling sound. There's sort of this in-between area where I can give it just enough pressure to sort of maximize the rattle. I don't think that's welding it. I think it's cutting it or like melting it. Oh, oh, hold on. No, not really. Yeah, I don't think it's supposed to do that. It's not supposed to melt through the surface. I think it's supposed to create like a spot weld nugget at the interface of the two. Maybe I should let that weld cool down. Okay, awesome, that didn't work, but it did give me another idea. I wonder if this thing could sink inserts. Now, I don't have inserts, but I have these little small nuts here. I drilled some holes the size of the flats so the nuts don't fit in there. Now this stuff I'm pretty sure is PVC, this gray plastic. It's not real ultrasonic welding friendly, but for sinking inserts, it should be fine. Again, I say inserts, but they're not inserts. If this even works and they do sink, I would expect them to have almost no mechanical resistance, like no bite into the material. But let's take this one shoddy experiment at a time. All right, let's put it in there crooked. Whoa, that thing moved fast. A pilot on the end of this horn would have probably been a good idea for this. Nice. Let's try another one. Oops. Man, that thing really moves fast. Bring in closer for this last one. The end of the horn is getting all, it's aluminum by the way, not plastic from before. Not very much pressure at all. As soon as I hit the foot pedal, this thing just seems to sink right in. If you get it straight. Let's try more. These are just a little bit bigger. These are number sixes. I think these were number fours. I've got two different hole sizes here. This is the size across the flats. 
So again, it, it doesn't fit. These are just a little undersized. I'm seeing some empty space around these small ones and they're going in so easy, I thought maybe I could give it a little bit more of a challenge. And this can be a little bit tricky because the inside diameter of that nut is getting pretty close to the outside diameter of the tip of the horn. I hope it sinks the nut instead of threading the horn. Ah. This is probably why real inserts have lead-ins. Okay, this was the flat-to-flat -flat sized hole. Ooh. Hold on a minute. What the hell happened to that washer? I don't know if that was legit or not, but it's in there. There's no way this one's going in that undersized hole. Not straight anyway. Yeah. That's how they do it overseas. I gotta find a better way to do this. Okay, I haven't been able to figure out a better way to do this. I'm just gonna have to rely on my ninja skills to get that in that hole. Actually, I wonder if I just chamfer that a little bit. Give me a second. Okay, it's not much, but I'll take whatever I can get. Nah. Might help if everything was clamped down. Okay, that sunk in there pretty good, but plastic came in up the middle. Okay, I didn't expect this to actually stay in there, but let's see what kind of retention force we're talking about here. It'd be a zero on that one. Negative one there. There's plastic came up the middle of that one. Yeah. I didn't know that one was in there pretty all right. Again, these things have no undercuts like inserts, so there's nowhere for that material to actually bite. Okay, well, I think there are three key takeaways. First, stay in school. Second, eat your vegetables. And third, get that flash off your camera. Okay, so the welding didn't quite work out, at least not with this horn and this arrangement. Maybe for that, 60 watts is just way not enough, even for that thin blister pack material. This whole sinking inserts thing looks like it has some promise. I mean, the horn is doing something. Now, yes, you could put in inserts with just a simple soldering iron, but this is heatless. The nut isn't melting its way in the way it would be with a soldering iron. I mean, I guess technically the mechanism is the same, the friction at the interface between the metal and the plastic, but everything stayed cool here. It just kind of shimmied its way down in there. All right, well, I got that out of my system. Give me a chance to clean up and we'll get back to our regularly scheduled programming. Thanks for watching.